Let's move on to some education matters because, as you know, some over 6,000 private schools are petitioning government or have asked government to support them with some stimulus package. For the past four months, they've been home and they don't have access to funds. And so they're asking government to support them with some stimulus package. I'm sure you know that last month, the MBSSI opened the portal for SMEs to apply for the 600 million cities stimulus package set aside to support uh, SMEs in these COVID-19 periods. So we'll soon be speaking to the executive director of MBSSI, uh, Madam Kusi Yankee, to tell us exactly what the state of uh, that is and how many applications they've received, especially from private schools, before, because we've been joined in studio by the National Deputy PRO of the Ghana National Association of Private Schools, Reverend William Barco. Good morning. Good morning. Hope I got the name right, Barco. Yes, please. Okay, so we are told over six thousand uh, uh, private schools have have asked our government for for some support from the stimulus package. Yes, thank you very much. Um, let me greet my national president, Dr. Damaso Storunsu, and um, the central regional executives. Yes, um, it's good you used uh, over six thousand mm -hmm. because. Ghana National Association of Private Schools alone, we are over 30,000. Okay. We are over 30,000. And um, I would say about 60, 70% have applied for the loan. Okay. Yes. So um, we are looking forward for a very positive response. What was the picture like? You've been home for four months. Just give us a brief of what you've been going through. Yes. Um, it has been a very challenging moment. It has not been that easy. We're all not expecting anything like lockdown or closure of schools. Mm -hmm. But um, the situation demanded that we close down uh, schools. And when the president came out uh, with the announcement, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. by then we were coming back from midterms. And that was the time that our parents used to pay school fees. And with private schools, our strength depends on the school fees. And since we're not able to collect our school fees, we're also not able to pay our teachers. So the teachers have been in the house all this while. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, we have, we have challenges. But the major one for now is the uh, resumption of schools. Mm -hmm. Now that school is going to resume, when you come to the private schools, we do uh, subject teaching. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, here, are, here is a case we have not paid our teachers and they are coming back. We are asking them to come back again to handle the kids, mm -hmm. uh, which is not that easy because uh, we've not paid them. And um, some of the teachers are also coming from far. Okay. They will have to pay transportation to school. So it means it will be difficult for you to sustain them in the school around times like this because... You don't have the funds. Yes, it's going to be difficult. Okay. Um, but, but but you've applied to the MBSSI to have access to the 600 million cities. You're saying some 60 to 70 percent of your members have applied. Yes, I wanted to say that, um, you know, when you come okay. to some of our classes... Okay, so, so let me speak to the executive uh, director of the National Board for Small Scale Industries, Madam Kusi Yankee. Good morning, madam. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I trust you well. Very well, thank you. Right. So I, I just want to ask whether you've received any uh, requests from private schools uh, regards access to the 600 million in the stimulus uh, package. Oh, yes. I mean, we have received um, some requests from uh, the private education sector, other sectors as well. Mm -hmm. And I think we are also, we have an association group who is um, their association as well. And we engage with them quite regularly. So what's the status of their request? It does appear that it's taking a bit of time for them to access these funds. Is that what they are saying or you are saying? That's what he's saying. He's saying it's taking time. Yes. They are hoping that the process will be faster than... It is take, it's taking a while because the schools are resuming for GHS and, and they are asking themselves that if teachers are going to be coming to school and school fees have not been paid, how are we going to manage them? How are we going to pay them? And so that's really a concern for them. 
Yes, they, um, I think that they ask for an extension. It's one of the associations asked for an extension in even the um, registration and application process. So I, okay. I'm, I'm a bit confused from your question. Okay. So how long will it take for, for them to access these funds so that when I apply for, uh, uh, for a loan for uh, part of the 600 million cities, how long will it take me for me to get, get uh, the funds, access the funds? As I mentioned to you, some of the associations wrote to extend the application process. Okay. So I don't, um, I don't know if it aligns with your question, but what had been asked by some of the association members, and some of them were one of the, I don't know which of the private schools association you are speaking with today, but some of them Ghana asked National Association of Private Schools. Ghana for, National Association of Private Schools. Um, the application process. Okay. Because you say they felt their members had not been able to fully um, apply for it. So I, I'm trying to um, figure out where this question is also coming So, from. So this association is in Ghana National Association of Private Schools, and he mentions that some 60 to 70 percent of their members have applied for this stimulus package. Um, yes, so as I mentioned to you, some of them have asked for an extension. Okay. Some of the private schools association have asked us to extend the date so they can finish putting in the application. And if I look at my data, it's the education and the tourism that have the least number of people who have actually applied. Okay. Okay. So, so what does it mean for teachers who are asking uh, right now that uh, they, they are about to resume school? GHS is starting today and they are wondering how do we keep afloat? What do you have to tell them? Um, as I mentioned to you the last time, the stimulus package is really to support the private schools and what the private schools intend to do with it based on the challenges they face during the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. So as much as possible, that is also very dear to our heart. So as soon as we release it to the private schools, I guess that if the school, because every school has what their need is. Mm -hmm. Some want to look at teachers, some want to look at other things that they have. Mm -hmm. So once it goes to the education and the education, uh, the, the educational institutions want to use it for that purpose, then it would work best for them. So apart from those who have asked for an extension, like you're saying, when do we hope to release funds to some of these private schools? Do we have timelines? Oh, we lost uh, Madam Kosi uh, Yanki, who is executive director of the National Board for Small Scale Industries, telling us how far with uh, requests from, especially these private schools, uh, we are told some 60 to 70 percent of uh, members of the Ghana National Association of Private Schools have applied for the 600 million stimulus package. And I have the uh, PRO here with me in the studio, Reverend William. Back. I'm hoping that we are able to raise it back on the phone. But William, yes. you've, you've heard what she said. Are you satisfied? Yes. Um, we don't have much problem with the extension. Our problem is the uh, urgency of the assessment because school is resuming on the 29th of this month. Mm -hmm. And um, the closing date for the application is 26th, which means it is going to take about two weeks mm -hmm. for us to assess the loan. Mm -hmm. And if it is going to take two weeks, how do we pay the teachers before they resume work? And that is the problem that we have. Mm -hmm. So we only want to plead with the government mm -hmm. to speed up with the process. Okay. No, so, one thing about... So we are told that we have her back. We have uh, Madam Kusi Yanki back, Executive Director of the MBSSI. Thanks for having you Hello. back. Yes. Sorry, God, I think it dropped. It, it, it's okay. So you were making a point before you left. No, sorry, you, you were asking a, a, a question. Oh, okay, so, so I was asking that for, apart from those who have asked for an extension, I wanted to ask you whether we have timelines in releasing funds, especially for those in the private schools. I think that we have timelines for all Ghanaian businesses that have been negatively impacted by COVID-19, not only special sectors. And so as much as possible, we want to be as fair and open to everybody because the impact on a lot of different sectors is also very high. Mm -hmm. One of which, as you mentioned, the private school, uh, in that tourism and industry, you will sell food and beverages, we've all been impacted by it. So as much as possible, our goal is to ensure that everybody else who's been negatively impacted 
we seize the right resources as much as soon as possible. But we for how the but... no intention of close or of closing the platform on Saturday. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we got a lot of requests from a lot of the associations, especially mm -hmm. those who have members outside of the Great Akwa region, mm -hmm. calling us and asking us and pleading with us that we needed to keep it open because they had some of them had not used the online portal, had used the paper platform, paper, mm -hmm. paper application. So they were now getting it from the rural areas. They were now um, they had now received their terms and they were applying and they thought it wouldn't be fair on that level to continue to just give out funds when we hadn't received it from them. Mm -hmm. So we took all of that into consideration because this I remember very well. When I came to your um, program, mm -hmm. I mentioned that this is really about inclusivity, not exclusivity. Mm -hmm. And all of this was made off the back of the conversations that we had had with our stakeholders. It was a very hard and tough decision to make, but the, the pressures from the associations as well as other partners or stakeholders on the ground led us to this point. Mm. And so we think that uh, we, we, the educational institutions would, should also bear with us as an institution, so that if we all have a united voice in this, we would do it as soon as possible. Okay, so, so two things you said. The first one, I want to know, so it means that you're likely not to close the portal uh, by Saturday as you're supposed to have done. I think that we called a press conference. Okay. I'm not sure if TVC was present. And the press conference was really to mention, yeah, because we were closing this past Saturday, so that's past. So um, to extend it to this Friday, mm -hmm. because as I mentioned, the associations wrote to us, they called us, they came to us, but also seen some fraud alerts on the platform that we needed to rectify. And along the lines of that, those decisions were made. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the, sec and the second and final things. Let me take you back again. I asked for a timeline. You say you have timelines for all those who have applied. But ideally, do you have an idea when we are likely to start releasing funds? Maybe in July or in August or in September or in December? Just an idea at least for purposes of planning. So as I mentioned at the press release, website, I said because of some of the fraud alerts that have come on the system, because we were ready to do that, and we got some major fraud alerts. And in view of that, which was real time based on the work, we had had to change. We had to change our timeline, but very soon, hopefully, by hopefully this week, you will see the funds going out. So, so hopefully this week. This week, today yes. is twenty second. So, yes. is it that twenty third or twenty fourth or twenty fifth? We should expect. What did you think? So you're saying hopefully this week we should start expecting uh, funds being disbursed. And I'm saying today is 22nd. Yes. So 23rd, 24th, yes. 25th, we should expect some disbursements going on. Yes, you will. Okay. Thank you, uh, Madam Kusi Yanki, who is Executive Director of the National Board for Small Scale Industry. So she says that uh, for those of you who applied for the 600 million cities stimulus package, this week we are expecting some release of funds. That should be come as good news to you. Yes, it is. It is. And um, I was trying to draw a scenario here that uh, when you come to the private schools, um, we do subject teaching. And uh, those teachers teach from GHS 1 to GHS 3. Mm -hmm. So when the government was going to make the announcement uh, about school resumption, we we're expecting that at least the basic school uh, will open mm -hmm. from uh, primary 1 to at least GHS um, 3. And like I told you earlier on, that um, when you come to private schools, our strength depends on our fees. Mm -hmm. So when you go to a school where uh, we have about five candidates in uh, GHS3 mm -hmm. um, who are going to um, complete. Now, where do we get the money to pay the teachers? Because some of these teachers teach from GHS1 to GHS3. Sometimes they go to the upper uh, primary. And we take the same fees. So let's assume that uh, uh, the fees we take from the students is 50 or 100 Ghana cities uh, per student. At the end of the term, we are expecting around 500 or 250 Ghana cities. So paying the teachers becomes a problem. That is why we want the government to speed up with the process so that we can also pay 
our teachers before they come to school. Mm -hmm. So if Madame is saying that by next week we should be expecting the funds, then it will be a good news mm -hmm. on, on, our, on our side. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. But uh, your association, do you have any internal arrangement to support your teachers while you wait for governments to release the funds? Yes, some have the financial muscle to support their teachers and others are suffering. Most of them are complaining because um, well, uh, looking at this pandemic, those who are much affected is the private schools. Mm -hmm. uh, I know other groups have applied for the stimulus package, but then, by then um, I think the concentration should first be on the private schools because the petty traders and the other groups were all working, but the private schools couldn't work because of the, uh, the closure. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, um, it is not going to be that easy. Mm -hmm. It is not going to be that easy. Mm -hmm. But um, we are also doing our best to put certain things in place so that at least uh, the students can come to school and learn. But does it look like the teachers are willing to resume school, even though it uh, doesn't look like salaries are readily available for them? Yes. What, what, do, what do you see? Some are not ready. Some are not ready to come because we are owing them uh, since uh, March. March. Okay. Yes. So if they've been in the house for all these uh, months and you are telling them to come and then start work again without uh, anything, then how do they come? Mm -hmm. So some are not ready to come. But those who are having that financial muzzle, yes, they are able to pay their teachers. The private schools have been graded. We have grade A, B, C, D, and even G. Mm -hmm. The grade A schools don't, don't have much uh, problems like those um, in grade D and, and E. Mm -hmm. Yes, so those people uh, are really um, suffering. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, uh, the situation demands. So what do we do? Mm -hmm. We will still you know, do our best to make sure that these students are back uh, to school. So for those who are unwilling to start for obvious reasons, what are you telling them? Those who are? Unwilling to start for obvious reasons. They haven't received salaries for the past four months. Yes. What are you telling What are the discussions you're having with them? Yes, we are still pleading with them to, to come back. Mm -hmm. But I'm very sure that some will not come. Some will not come. So we still have to employ new teachers to come and then teach. Mm -hmm. uh, others will also come when they hear that uh, government has now released the mm -hmm. uh, loan to the schools mm -hmm. because all that they are expecting is their salary. Mm -hmm. uh, when you come to private schools, our salaries are nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the little that they are taking, if we are unable to pay, uh, it will also be very difficult for them also to work. Mm -hmm. But the moment they hear that, yes, um, the stimulus package has been released to the schools, I'm very sure that mm -hmm. they will come back and then continue with the good works that they are doing for Mother Ghana. So when you receive these stimulus packages, are you, are you going to pay them all the arrears you owe them? Um, Is it likely? Uh, yes, we are having negotiations with the, the teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, some schools will be able to do that, and um, uh, to the best of my knowledge, some will also pay half. Some will also pay half, because uh, the amount accumulated, I don't think the stimulus package will be able to pay all the uh, salaries because mm -hmm. uh, it is nothing, I don't think it is going to be something big. 600 million cities for a lot of people. A lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of people. So uh, I assume that um, uh, a school may take somewhere 10,000, mm -hmm. uh, 20,000 Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. And looking at the number of teachers that we have, you'll go to a school and uh, find about uh, 30, uh, 60 workers in the school. Mm -hmm. So all these workers are supposed to, to be paid. Mm -hmm. So if you are paying a teacher, uh, 200 Ghana cities, 300 Ghana cities, multiplied by the number of teachers you have in the school, you know how much uh, yeah, it is going to be. Paid, so yeah. uh, it is not going to be that easy for us to use only the stimulus package to pay the, the teachers. So you're encouraging parents to pay their fees? Yes, uh, <laughs> we are encouraging them um, to pay their, their, their fees because fees. that is our strength. Without it, there's nothing that we can, we can do. And mm -hmm. the children have also stayed in the house for long and they might have forgotten some of the things that they, they learned. We introduced this e-learning, but 
when you go to the, the villages, they couldn't get access uh, to it. And mm -hmm. some were also having, those in the urban centers, mm -hmm. some were having power fluctuations and all that. For that matter, they couldn't learn. And we have only three months ahead of us for them to go and write the BEC. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a bit challenging, which means that we will have to do everything mm -hmm. possible to uh, recover things that we were not able to teach. Mm -hmm. Well, I wish you all the best, but before I let you go, I just want you to tell us, in case this, these funds from government delays a bit, what do you anticipate will be the challenge or the impact on teaching and learning? Yes, the, 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 the challenge is going to be that um, the teachers will not come to school mm -hmm. and the proprietors alone cannot handle all the, all the subjects. Mm -hmm. all the subjects. So uh, it will tend to affect the candidates, those who are going to write the BEC. So um, we also played with the government to uh, uh, come into our aid mm -hmm. so that we can assess this stimulus package uh, for us to pay the teachers for them to come back to school. Reverend William Barkow, we are grateful that you made time to speak with us this morning. Reverend William Barkow is a national, is a PRO, national deputy PRO of the Ghana National Association of Private Schools. And he is, uh, in essence, telling us, uh, or telling government that uh, they have not been able to do anything or receive any funds for the past four months they've been home. Other traders are, are making some money, others are doing, you know, some work here and there, but they have not been able to gather any funds at all. And so they are hoping that the MBSSI will pay attention to them first before looking at every other, uh, you know, category of SMEs who have applied for the 600 million. But we spoke to the MBSSI Executive Director a while ago, and she is assured that this week some disbursements of funds will be made this week. So that's some good news for you.